Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I am back with an art journal. So let's get started. Today I'm working on my moleskin sketchbook and um, I am going to start out by using this embossing paste through stencils. This is going to allow me to create some texture on my page even before I apply my paint. So first of all I'm going to start with a stencil that has some text on it. I am going with my spatula and I am going to randomly apply some of this texture all over my pages. And here is how my page is looking at the moment. I hope you can see the texture. And now I'm going to apply a layer of color. I am starting out by using paper archit chalk paint and I like to create my first layer using those paints just because they are chalk and uh, you don't really need to prepare your pages with gesso. I'm using two colors, vanilla and caramel, and I'm mixing them directly on my pages. You see that I dip uh, in one or on the other color, my brush, and at this stage I don't really care how this is going to look on my page, I just want to have a first layer of color and um, to get rid of that blank page. Also notice how I start very lightly, I am applying light colors in my page but I will end up with a very darker page and that's because I always like to start with light colors and build up the layers as I go. I find this technique to be much easier than uh, starting out with uh, super dark colors. And now I'm switching from a Paper Archie to another brand. This is the Stress Paint and it's one of my favorite colors for backgrounds. That's uh, Antique Bronze and uh, I really like it because it, all, it also adds a shine to my pages. Now I am uh, applying it with the dabber. I blend it out with my baby wipe or my fingers and I also make sure that I go over that texture that I have applied with a stencil. So after applying my paint, you will be able to see all that texture that I had from the previous step. So here is how my background is looking at the moment. Now I'm going to go and do some uh, stamping. Now I'm going to do something scary now. I have this uh, for ages and I haven't used it just because it's so big. So I decided to be brave and I'm going to cut out a piece out of that. So this is a stamp that uh, actually prints um, canvas texture and uh, by having that uh, small piece it's even easier for me. Now a great idea is to peel off the backing which is going to make it uh, even more flexible and I am going to stamp all over my pages by using this uh, stamp and uh, with archival ink. The color I'm using is sepia. You see how flexible now that stamp is. So I am going to avoid having uh, rough edges and uh, squares. I felt that sepia archival ink was too bright for my page, for the background, so I'm going over it with my baby wipe and although archival ink is permanent and it's not dry yet, so I can push it more at the background. I still have that uh, texture at the background. Now I'm going to use this big brush marker and I'm going to go all around my page to add a darker frame. The color I'm using is Indian Red. As I am doing that, just to remind you that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I am using today, along with links to online shops where you can get them, down below in the description area if you are watching on YouTube, as well as on my blog. And as a final step for my background, I'm going to do some splashes. I am dipping a thin brush directly inside my Distress Paint, and that's the same color I used for the background, that's uh, Antique Bronze. I'm adding some splashes in both pages and then I'm going to leave that aside to dry. 
And here is a close-up look of my background to look at the shine that I got from the antique bronze color. And now let's work on the focal points. So I'm going to use this stamp. This comes from a darkroom door and it's called paint tubes. So I'm going to stamp uh, the paint tubes with archival ink on a piece of uh, scrap paper. And now I can go ahead and color them. I want the paint tubes, the main part of them, to be silver. So I'm going to use distress paint and that's uh, brushed pewter. And what is great about using a distress paint for this job is that uh, they are semi-transparent and just because they are very liquid and uh, that uh, helps me not to lose all that detail from the stamps. I am only going to use three of those tubes for my focal points, so now I'm going to use my scissors and cut them out. Now for my focal points, I'm going to combine two images, so I'm going to use this butterfly from this Paper RG stamp set. This is a beautiful butterfly which I am going to stamp three times. I'm going to use my black archival link for that. It's quick and easy for me to color my butterflies at this stage with my big brush markers. So I am going over them with my gel medium and this is going to turn that paper into a non-porous surface. So my technique with the big brush markers is going to work perfectly. The great thing of working with uh, the big brush markers over the stamped image is that they are transparent as you can see so they don't cover up all that beautiful detail on the butterfly. I am using two markers for each butterfly to create some shadows at the center of the butterfly. So you see here I used orange and red at the center and I'm just smudging everything out with my finger. You can give your butterfly a quick heat set and then start over so that you can build up the layers of color. Once I'm happy with the coloring, I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the butterfly and then I'm going to repeat the same process for the other two butterflies so I will end up by having this butterfly, a blue one and a green one. So here are all my butterflies ready to go along with their uh, bodies which are going to be those paint tubes and now I'm going to work again on my background. So now I'm going to use this uh, stamp, this comes from a paper archie stamp set and I'm going to stamp three times on my page. For that I'm using black archival ink. It is not going to be a perfect impression, after all that's not what I am going for. Since we have all that texture on the background, it's uh, impossible to have a perfect impression, but art journaling is not about perfection, so just don't stretch yourself too much and don't be too hard on yourself about a uh, having everything perfect on your pages and uh, embrace the imperfections you will see that at the end they are going to look beautiful. So now I want to have those uh, circles on my page because this is going to give a definition and a place for my butterflies to live. Now that I have that down I am going to stick the butterflies by using gel medium. And now I'm going to do my shadows by using uh, this big brush marker. This is the exact same color that I used for the border, that's Indian red. This is one of my favorite techniques, a go-to technique for sure. And uh, when I do that, I feel that uh, it uh, really brings all the elements of the page together with the background.
Another go-to technique of mine is to use my white gel pen to add some highlights on my focal points. Now this is a beautiful stamp, those paint brushes are great and match perfectly my paint tubes, so I'm going to stamp with them at uh, the edges of my page. Usually when you have a, a rubber stamp with corners, it's always uh, better to cut them out, otherwise you will get an impression of those corners. I don't know how I manage to do that all the time. So now that my stamp is ready, I'm going to stamp with black archival ink. You will not get a great impression, that's not what I am going for, again remember that we do have all that texture there, but I want to have some definition on the borders to bring the eye there. I am not going to do it all over the place, just in two areas is enough. I am not going to color them or be bothered with the, all those brushes at all, I just want to have all those lines there that I think uh, bring something more to the page. So um, I am going to make sure that everything is nice and dry and then I will move on to the next step. So it, now it's time to stamp the sentiment and for that again I am using the same stamp set from uh, Paper Archie. I am going to stamp my sentiment with black archival ink and I will try to find a spot that doesn't have too much uh, texture. So my stamp set says life is a great big canvas, you should throw all the paint you can on it. I am not afraid to stamp the sentiment at all, if something goes wrong I can always go back with my thin black marker and fix things, but uh, fortunately everything went perfect. Now I am going to add some texture and since my sentiment says about canvas, I am going to stick this uh, sticky bag canvas by Tim Holtz. I have cut out strips of this and I am going to stick them in different areas of my layout. I am also going to use my mini attacher and uh, staple all those uh, strips of uh, fabric down just because I can and because I like to see that uh, metal uh, element on my page and now I am going to finish off the page by using some ribbons by Tim Holtz. I like to cut out the pieces that I want to use and then I'll go all over the place and stick uh, different elements here and there. And now I'm going to use this stamp set with those uh, letters. This is an alphabet stamp set by Concord and Nine. And I am going to stamp around the butterflies three words. For the first one I'm going to spell create. Then for the orange butterfly I'm going to spell dream. And for uh, the green butterfly I'm going to spell inspire.
After stamping all three words, I am going to use my white gel pen. I am adding some highlights around the letters, which is going to help the letters pop and add more definition to the words. And as a finishing touch, I'm going to add some gesso splashes. So I have used some thick gesso. I am diluting it with water. And with a thin brush, I'm going to do some splashes. And since I have that gesso on my brush, I am going to add a little bit of white definition on the fabric. And that completes my project for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of my project today. Thank you all so much for watching and for all the lovely comments.